Hello friends, I'm back to read another book. So we just finished reading this book and I wanted to talk about the genre or the type of book this is. It falls into a category called fractured fairy tales and that's when an author takes a story from a traditional folk tale or fairy tale and they change something about it. Sometimes they change the characters, Maybe they change the gender of the characters or something else about the characters. Um, sometimes they change the ending. If they're not satisfied with the original ending, that would be a change in plot. Uh, and sometimes they change the point of view that the fairy tale is told in, like this one. Today, we are going to read this one, which is called The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig. As you can tell, they've mixed up some of the characters from the traditional Three Little Pigs story. Let's see what happens. The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig. Once upon a time, there were three cuddly little wolves with soft fur and fluffy tails who lived with their mother. The first was black, the second was gray, and the third was white. One day, the mother called the three little wolves around her and said, my children, it is time for you to go out into the world. Go build a house for yourselves, but beware for the Big Bad Pig. Don't worry, mother, we will watch out for him, said the three little wolves, and they set off. Soon they met a kangaroo who was pushing a wheelbarrow full of red and yellow bricks. Please, would you give us some of your bricks? asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the kangaroo, and she gave them lots of red and yellow bricks. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of bricks. The very next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of bricks that the little wolves had built. The three little wolves were playing croquet in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside the house and locked the door. The pig knocked on the door and grunted, little wolves, little wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the l three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. Do you have any predictions right now about what's going to happen next? But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his sledgehammer and he knocked down the house. The three little wolves only just managed to escape the bricks before the bricks crumbled and they were very frightened indeed. We shall have to build a stronger house, they said. Just when they saw, just then they saw a beaver who was mixing concrete in a concrete mixer. Please, will you give us some of your concrete? Asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the beaver, and he gave them buckets and buckets full of messy, slurry concrete. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of concrete. No sooner had they finished than the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of concrete that the little wolves had built. They were playing battle door and shuttlecock in the garden, and when they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house and shut the door. The pig rang the door, <laughs> rang the bell and said, little frightened wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So we huffed and he puffed 
and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his mnemonic drill and smashed the house down. The three little wolves managed to escape, but their chinny chin chins were trembling and trembling and trembling. We shall build an even stronger house, they said, because they were very determined. Just then, they saw a truck coming along the road carrying barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. Please, will you give us some of your barbed wire, a few iron bars, and armored plates, and some heavy metal padlocks, they said to the rhinoceros who was driving the truck. Sure, said the rhinoceros, and he gave them plenty of barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. He also gave them some plexiglass and some reinforced steel chains because he was a very generous and kind-hearted rhinoceros. So the three little wolves built themselves an extremely strong house. It was the strongest, securest house one could possibly imagine. They felt absolutely safe. The next day, the big bad pig came prowling along the road as usual. The three little wolves were playing hopscotch in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house, bolted the door, and locked all 37 padlocks. The pig dialed the video entrance phone and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins, let me come in. No, 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 said the little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He brought some dynamite laid it against the house, lit the fuse, and dot, dot, dot. The house blew up. The three little wolves just managed to escape with their fluffy tails scorched. Something must be wrong with our building materials, they said. We have to try something different, but what? At that moment, they saw a flamingo coming along, pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Please, would you give us some flowers, asked the little wolves. With pleasure, said the flamingo, and he gave them lots of flowers. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of flowers. One wall of, was of marigolds, one of daffodils, one of pink roses, and one of cherry blossoms. The ceiling was made of sunflowers, and the floor was a carpet of daisies. They had water lilies in their bathtub and buttercups in their refrigerator. It was a rather fragile house, and it swayed in the wind, but it was very beautiful. The next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of flowers that the three little wolves had built. He rang the, the blue bell. He rang the blue bell at the door and said, little frightened wolves with their trembling chins and the scorched tails, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. 
Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. What do you think's gonna happen next? But as he took a deep breath, ready to huff and puff, he smelled the soft scent of the flowers. It was fantastic. And because the scent was so lovely, the pig took another breath and then another. Instead of huffing and puffing, he began to sniff. He sniffed deeper and deeper until he was quite filled with the fragrant scent. His heart grew tender and he realized how horrible he had been. Right then he decided to become a big, good pig. He started to sing and to dance the tarantula. Tarantella. At first, the three little wolves were a bit worried. It might be a trick. But soon they realized that the pig had truly changed. So they came running out of the house. They started playing games with him. First, they played pig pong and then piggy in the middle. And when they were all tired, they invited him into the house. They offered him tea and strawberries and wolfberries and asked him to stay with them as long as he wanted. The pig accepted and they all lived happily together ever after. And that's the end of that story. I'm going to have an activity for you all to do and respond to in Seesaw and I will, I will post that in the PowerPoint and I will also post the instructions on Seesaw with a voice recording of me reading the directions. And I look forward to seeing your responses. Thank you for watching, friends.